<laughs> How do you do buckaroos? Don't typically do a second take, but uh, I didn't have an option on this one. <laughs> I had it all set up to go, and Wynn came and took my camera, and everything went kind of haywire. So, well, uh, take two. <laughs> uh, although, uh, as usual, this is unscripted. Uh, so it'll probably be even a little bit different than what I just said, because <laughs> I never know what I'm going to say, man. So I've got one from Public House Brewing. It is the Elusive IPA. Uh, it was part of a mixed pack uh, that came with their historic, uh, gosh, his 1501, Frisco 1501 Historic Lager, which is basically their version of a California Common or Steam Beer, if you're familiar with the classic Anchor Steam. But it came with, with this one, the stout, and oh gosh, uh, something else, but I don't remember now what. 6.8%, uh, 65 IBUs, uh, curiously smooth, hop strange, heady brew, hard to pin down, hard to put down. So there you go. They suggest a serving temp at 50 to 55. I probably got a little bit colder than that to start with. Uh, so a, a couple years, I think it was, I can't remember if it was two or three years ago now, to be honest with you. Uh, but I was I was up there at the brewery and um, in, in St. James and happened to talk to the head brewer up there. And he was talking to me about how hard it was when it came time for them to brew an IPA, how hard it was for a small brewery like they are to procure some of the hops. Some of the big guys buy up all the hops or drive the price up so high that it, it makes it virtually impossible for the, the smaller breweries to keep up. So he decided to use a different blend of hops uh, to, to create kind of a different IPA. I kind of applaud at least what they do in theory is that at least they didn't try to be like everybody else. You know, they didn't try to uh, follow a style or a trend. I'm just tired of every brewery trying to do what somebody else is doing. I applaud those that have a mind of their own. I can't remember all the hops in there, although I, I listed the ingredients at the beginning of the video, but uh, it does contain Centennial, a Falconer's Flight, Antonym, uh, but it also uses Crystal, which isn't a hop that you typically see in an IPA. So now that I've talked for a couple minutes, I'm going to have a drink of this thing. The aromas are beautiful, actually. I'm getting some orange blossom-like notes right away on the nose. I also feel like kind of a, a tinge of honey. There's certainly other citrus and other things to be found. That's just what I noticed right away. Oh, yeah, it is nice. Um, I, I hadn't had it for a couple years. Now I remember what I liked about it because it is different. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that, kind of a bright orange, deep golden, I don't know, light amber, whatever you'd call that. It's just, it pours beautifully. It says to pour it in a tulip pint. Well, that's exactly what I poured it in, by golly. <laughs> I didn't know it would said that on the glass or on the bottle when I grabbed the glass, but there you go. As Bob Ross used to say, a happy accident. So I'm feeling kind of a little bit of stone fruit in the middle. Uh, just kind of a, a mixture of light peach and apricot. You're going to get some varied citrus. I certainly feel some orange zest, some grapefruit. Now that I've let this sit a minute, I feel like I'm getting lemon zest on the nose as well. Holy crap, there's a big-ass frickin' <laughs> size of a frickin' Volkswagen Bumblebee out here. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I happen to be really allergic, so I'm a little concerned, but I'm going to hope he goes about his business while I go about mine. The problem is sometimes I've had these IPAs, right, because of the, the, the aromas, the, the bees tend to gravitate towards them. No shit, I've had that happen to me before. So I hope he's not, uh, I hope he smells a flower better than my IPA, I tell you that. But, but this thing is incredibly aromatic, so I'm kind of wondering if he's going to head my way. And this mother humper is big. <laughs> Holy crap in a basket, he's a monster, and he keeps inching just a little bit closer to me. So 
Son of a biscuit. Okay, let me focus on this and finish the video and so I can get my ass back in the house before this bumblebee sends me to the hospital, which I'd really hate. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. So, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things I like about this IPA. I, I love the aromas, I love the flavors, but I love the concept even more. I love that they intentionally thought out of the box. I love that they intentionally didn't try to follow somebody else's hot profile, which seems every other brewery's doing. You know, everything wants to be a New England IPA these days. So, yeah, one brewery copied another one and said, oh, now now we've done it better. Now, now this, this neck of the woods has perfected this. Well, I don't know how you can perfect the style, but some people claim such nonsense. I just like a brewery that's that's got some balls, has some integrity, and doesn't try to follow the flock, you know, and, and, and hats off to uh, Public House for thinking out of the box and not being a sheep, <laughs> you know, like so many other breweries are, and did they just try to be relevant by following a trend somebody else started. I'm just not a fan of that behavior, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> this thing is delectable. Uh, the finish is very nice. You almost get these light peppery notes at the end. Uh, finishes just perfect, just a little bit of stinging carbonation. It's just nice. It's just put together well. Uh, I, I really like it. It's just enjoyable. Holy shit, he is getting close. <laughs> it is just enjoyable. And although it is plenty hoppy at 65 IBUs, it is balanced well, which again is, is something many IPAs forget about these days in favor of being trendy or just overly bitter just for the sake of being bitter while well, this beer is very hoppy without getting bitter and that's what they've done well at the public house they do a lot of things right at the public house brewery uh, I drank the, the historic uh, Frisco 1501 lager yesterday uh, they just did a brilliant job uh, with that California common style and again it's a it's a style that most craft breweries aren't getting near because it's not a trendy style but I, I think those of us that love that style, that appreciate what Anchor Steam did way back when, uh, enjoy enjoy that style and, and really appreciate what another brewery does their take on it. And they just did a, a, an absolutely amazing job, in my particular opinion. Outside of Anchor Steam, which is the benchmark of the style, this really was, in, in my opinion, the, the, the best the best interpretation other than the original oh excuse me goodness gracious great balls of fire I've had the revelation stop before it's fantastic but again it's been a couple years so I am kind of looking forward to revisiting it I don't know why I can't remember this. Oh, Rod's Cream Ale. Gosh, I just went, there we go. It was the Rod's Cream Ale, which I actually did a video for already, too. So, uh, the Rod's Cream Ale. See, it's interesting. They're not necessarily doing new styles, but they're doing styles that most craft breweries aren't doing right now. So, although they're not making up new stuff, so you can say, well, that's not original. They are doing something original by doing styles that aren't trendy, that other breweries aren't doing to death. Uh, the Raj Cream Ale, the, the, the Frisco, California Common style. Um, and then here is their, their own unique twist on an IPA. Mm. I can see why they tell you to drink this at about 50 to 55. Because the, the nose, even though it's very fragrant to start with, the nose has really opened up. The longer I let this sit, the more fragrant the beer becomes. And well, I noticed uh, I noticed some orange blossom early on. I, I mentioned honey. As I've let this warm, uh, uh, grapefruit zest has come to the forefront on the nose, as well as some various other citrus. It's just. Gosh, the more I drank this, it's the same thing happened to me when I drank that Frisco Lager, is that the more I drank it, the more I enjoyed it, you know, I was going, oh, every sip was like, oh, wow, that's even better than the last one, that's kind of how this one is, it's just a well done beer. 
It may not be the trendy flavors that some folks may be looking for, but if you can get beyond the trend and have a mind, <laughs> have a mind of your own and not follow the, the trendy craft beer sheep, this is the IPA for you. If you have the ability to think out of the box and, and not drink, drink something just because other beer geeks say this is what's cool right now, <laughs> this is an IPA for you. So there you go. I am Ton of Beer Whisperer, uh, prolific beer drinker, beer evangelist. Purveyor of wisdom. Whew, damn Skippy, and all around good guy. You have a good one.